What up, it's your girl Minna, and today I'm gonna be going over my everyday basic makeup look. You can kind of call this soft glam because you can do this look to go anywhere. You can wear this look out on a date night. You can wear this look on a Saturday morning. You can wear this look whenever. It's basically going to upgrade the natural face to look like you have something going on and maybe not a lot. Like if someone doesn't really know you and they see you, they would think, oh, that's a, like a cute natural look. But lo and behold, it took more than a few steps to get to it. Make sure you subscribe and let's go. I did a tutorial on this hair. It is on my IGTV on Instagram. So make sure you look at that. But this is the unit that I'm wearing and I'll link it below in case you wanna purchase it on Amazon. It's always sold out because it's that bomb. So you may or may not find it. I wanna modify my T-zone, the products you use should definitely depend on the weather outside because if it's cooler out not as cold then you're not going to need as much mattification with your makeup versus if it's mad outside and you get oily then you may want to double down on whatever you do to keep your skin matte so it does depend i mean this is revlon photo ready prime plus mattifying and pore reducing this was sent to me and you know, it's nice. It doesn't keep me matte. It's a comfortable matte. I could have used my NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop primer, but that's fine. We'll go with this. <laughs> this look is always requested on Instagram, so make sure you are paying attention. Shoot, take out your makeup and do this with me. We're going to be talking. If you don't like talking, then you can skip the video. If you like talking, then keep on watching, okay? So, Juvia's Place I Am Magic Velvet Matte Foundation in the color Togo. That is my cooler weather color, although it's it's hot here in Houston, warm I would say. In the summertime when it's really, really hot, I get darker because I'm outside. All right, so for my everyday look, I still do full glam. I don't do BB cream, I don't do any of that stuff. I like my makeup to be painted on, okay? Now it's not gonna look like that, but that's the reality. So that's what I'm doing. I like to use a, a brush instead of a sponge. I did a video on this whole concept and you'll find it on my YouTube channel where I tried out a brush versus a sponge to see what works better. Yeah. So make sure you watch that. When I get close to my hairline, my face line, I'm stopping because I don't want to pile on any product near the hairline. That is not where I want the product to be. The perimeter of our faces are darker than the middle of our faces. So you see how I'm focusing more on the middle of my face. I'm going to put this over my eyelids. When I'm doing eyeshadow, I do not put the product over my eyelids. But since I'm doing my basic look, I don't wear eyeshadow and I need this to go over my eyelids to even out my skin tone. So now that I've buffed all of that in with the remainder after I've wiped off my brush I'm gonna go to my hairline I don't want a lot of the foundation on my hairline simply because we're gonna contour and you don't want this color on your hairline my hairline is darker than the middle of my face one other thing I do not bring my makeup down to my neck or my chest I never do that I do bring it just around my chin but that's it it's messy and if you want to get makeup on your shirt or on someone else's shirt then put makeup on your neck okay this is Juvia's Place I am magic concealer in the color 10 so I'm using my spin fan to dry this down a smidge before I actually blend it in. Now you can't do that with every concealer. This concealer is more runny than some. So for instance, if you wanted to use the Morphe concealer, you cannot do that. It dries too quickly. So I'm blending out the sides of the concealer before I blend on the inside because I really want there to be a lot of pigment toward the inside. These sponges come in a four pack, I believe, the four or five pack on Amazon for $10. So stinking good. Softest sponges ever. Definitely rivals the Beauty Blender. You got to try it out. It's 10 bucks. You can't beat it. So you see how I'm turning over the sponge? on the back to like blend out the edges because this side doesn't have any product on it and then now I go to the side of the nose so I like to bring the concealer down the sides of the nose to help give that long narrow nose look and now with the same color I'm gonna highlight the rest of my face and then we're gonna move on to concealer and now it's time to contour you see that I did the highlight under my cheekbone to help that look really like pushed up like a push-up bra okay here we have the stick foundation from Juvia's Place and this is the color Congo. It's very dark, but I like a dark color. I like some drama. Blend this out with this minted foundation brush. I don't like this as a foundation brush, but it is the perfect size to blend out my contour. I always start with my cheek, you know, stippling that in an upward motion, being sure that there are no harsh lines. You gotta get this into your hairline in order for it to look most natural. You gotta wash the hairline, rinse the hairline out or something every day. Just gotta get in there, gotta get in there, okay? Gotta be a little rough. You could use the sponge. I've done that. I just like to use the brush. You 
could totally use the sponge to blend this out. It's gonna shear it out though. The sponge will shear it out. All depends on how, how pronounced you want this to be, how much coverage you want. But this is a dark color, so I could have sheared it out and I still could have been fine because this contour is dark. So you can use a stick foundation as your contour. You can use a powder foundation. You can use a, yeah, powder foundation as a contour. You can use a powder as a contour. You can use a contour powder as a contour. So take a look at my video where I did powder contour versus cream contour and you can see what those differences are. And then here we go. We're just blending it all in, you know. If you watch any of my IGTV videos or even the ones here on YouTube, you know I always like to do this. I don't take more product. I just take what's left over. Make sure it touches the eyebrows. And you know my brows are shaved off on purpose because I like to reshape them. I shave the ends off on my own. I do my own brows. I do my own everything. Nails, hair. And then I give a little V at the bottom, you know. A little V action. And then, then I take the sponge, no more product, just whatever's on here. And I go over the line between the contour and the highlight, just to make sure that there's no harsh line. And you could also go down the middle of your nose. I usually don't. I like it to be, to be pronounced, but you know, you could if you felt ever so inclined. Make sure nothing got taken off though. I still wanna see my contour. Now I'm gonna set my face and I have recently been really enjoying the Ciate London Everyday Vacay Coconut Setting Powder. It came in my boxy charm try out products that I've never even heard of or can't even afford. And I'm like, what? Yes, bomb. So I've never heard of this company. Love this powder though. I use it every day. It is a white powder. It is very finely milled. So don't be alarmed at how white it is. It makes my makeup look amazing. Someone asked me why I use a white powder and that I was the only black person she saw that put a white powder over my whole face. The difference is that this is not your average white powder. It is very finely milled. I mean, it just feels like butter. So it doesn't leave any whiteness on my face at all. You know. So now I'm just making sure I don't have any creasing under my eye. Well, not too much. It blends out so easily. And I like to really get that line because I want to further pronounce my nose. Although this is white, you'll see. It's going to come off very nicely. Alrighty. Oh, wait, what am I doing? And then I take, I got to put some on the cap. What am I doing here? Let's just do that. On the cap. Boom, 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 boom. Go down the nose. Get the forehead. We're setting all the highlighted areas first. And then I'm going to go over the contour with a brush. Just remember, you can't put every white powder all over your face. This one I can. So now there's some on the back of this stippling brush. Dust off the excess and I'm going over the rest of the face. I just want to take away the shine. Go over the eyes and then while I'm at it, dusting off what's already here. And I'm pressing it on, you see? And when I come here, because I did put a lot, I'm, I'm like brushing it. I put more than usual today, but that's fine. So the whole face is set, even in the hairline. I don't want the hairline to be greasy. That might be too much powder for some of you who have dry skin. So if it is, clearly then you wouldn't use the mattifying foundation and or the powder all over your face. You really gotta just see what works for you, but this doesn't make me feel uncomfortable. It feels fine. So then now I do a face powder. Face powder is a powder that matches my face. So it's not a powder that matches my highlight, it matches my literal face. So I I need to go like buy new ones when the stores open up again. But this is what I'm using right now. I can go a little darker, but it still works, so I use it. This is CoverGirl Queen Collection. The color is medium. And I take a flat brush. I like flat brushes because it applies more product at one time versus stippling it on and spending 10 years applying your product. I just want it to go on now and go on full coverage. It might not make much of a difference, but it's a subtle thing just to make sure that I don't look too white. That's going to bring back the color to my face. So I'm going to do my eyebrows using this Mented Cosmetics brow product. The color is called Take a Brow. So you saw that I set my underbrow with the same setting powder and now I'm going to put powder on my eyelid. That's to set it and also give it color. I was using this True Blend Matte Ambition Deep Cool 2 powder foundation but it's like ran out and this thing is so bomb that I can't even find it anywhere. So I'm going to take what left over inside and put that over my lid. This used to be my face powder. I just ran out and I like it a lot. So I'm just putting that on my lid, but literally whatever powder I put on my forehead is what I would be putting over my eyelid as well. It wouldn't be something different. And I'm putting that over my eyelid and blending it subtly into my into my brow bone, into the concealer so that there are no harsh lines swirling this brush into the corners of this product because it's like done but it's so good i just like it and right out here so that this isn't harsh i'm not gonna go over the concealer because i still want it 
to pop. Okay, so I haven't done a wing liner in a long time. Normally, I don't do a wing liner. I sometimes don't even do top liner. I might just do my mascara, my lashes, and move on down, but I feel like doing liner today because why not? I don't know if I should do a wing. It's been a minute since I did a wing, and I would hate to mess it up, you know what I'm saying? I don't feel like wrestling with a wing right now. Like, sometimes the wing be a wrestle, and I don't want to wrestle right now, okay? I don't want no tugging and pulling. Okay, this is full spectrum defining moment blackest black eyeliner any black eyeliner will work and i've even used black powder and just placed it in an eyeliner fashion just to darken up the eyes that's all any black liner will work so just take any brush you know and just smudge it you just want it to look a little smoky not precise just there As falsies are an absolute must i mean i've done this with just like mascara but oh that's once in a great great while i like to do ah I like falsies. So the mascara that I use on a top lash doesn't usually concern me simply because I put false lashes on. So I just take whatever I've got, but the mascara that I put on my bottom lash matters, honey. I'm still reusing my Miss 3D lashes. I mean, I use these till the wheels fall off and then I move on to another one. I have been using lashes from China. I've mentioned that several times, but of course, in case you're new, I want you to know that. The link in my bio will take you to my Amazon storefront where you can see some of my favorites. The ones from China will take like probably two months to get here, but obviously on Amazon, on, it's a lot faster. The lashes are already here in the US. Lashes and weave all come from China, honey. Indonesia, China, you know, it's all foreign. There we have that. I like a dramatic lash, but of course you can start off with something natural if you're not really sure about the whole situation. Your best bet is to put a liner on first so that if there's any gap between your, the falsy and your lateral lashes, it's not going to show. So I feel like all beginners should put on an eyeliner and make it a little bit thick again, just so that there's no obvious gap if you put the lash in the wrong place. We're taking the lash, right? And I'm gonna apply the glue to my lashes. Don't ask me what glue I use because it's not a glue that I recommend. That's why I never discuss. <laughs> uh, black girls, you know exactly what I'm referring to and I do what works, so I, I'm not gonna change that. I take my lashes off every night. I don't wear them overnight. I don't do any of that stuff, okay? I take everything off, the wig, the makeup, everything. I like to be free. I don't like to be yoked up in anything. I can't stand that, okay? You want them to get a little tacky? What we can do is move on to the face powder while that gets tacky. That's actually a good thing. Let's do that. Check on the CoverGirl one because the other one just doesn't have enough product in it. So face powder matches your skin. It's gonna go over everything so that nothing is too harsh. So by this this time I would say my lashes are kind of ready. You really gotta gauge it. You wanna make sure that it's dark but not completely black. So almost charcoal but not completely black. So it's tacky. So look down, squint your eyes. I like to put the lash in the middle and then I go to the corner. You want this to really meet the corner. You don't want it to be so far in that you got a gap over here. Meet the corner, press it in, and then I press in this inner corner. And then I usually use my fingers to press my lashes together. I do have a tool and you want to spread your lashes to make sure nothing's clumped up. Obviously I do mascara first so that it blends and you know, nothing looks crazy. And I just use my fingers to pinch. Looking down, squinting, my eyes. My lashes are curly, so you want to go on top of them, place it in the middle, place it on the end, and then place this here. If your lashes are really curly, you may need to take tweezers and hold your lashes down and then place the falsies on top. I've had to do that on clients when I was taking clients, clients who have really curly lashes. You wanna avoid getting the glue on your lashes themselves because it just makes a huge mess and then the takeoff process is a little painful. <laughs> you don't want that. Now we need to do bottom eyeliner because I'm not a fan of having thick full lashes up here and then nothing on the bottom. It just looks kind of bald eagle-ish. It doesn't balance out. So you wanna balance out the full lashes on the bottom with some eyeliner and mascara so that everything looks Awesome. I still use the NYX jumbo pencils because why not? Okay, and I like to take a pencil, a, a brush, the back of a brush, a thin one. I clean it to make sure that there's nothing on it and I go like this. And do it in a messy fashion simply because you want the eyeliner to get on the skin, not just on the waterline, you want it on the skin. And it's a little messy, but that's okay because we're gonna take that same flat brush or just like, yeah, you just need a flat brush of some sort. We're gonna smudge this out just a little. We're not smudging it too wildly, just a little bit. Clean off the brush and smudge the other side. It just adds a little bit of drama to the bottom lash line without doing too much. No need to set 
set that with powder. I don't do that. If you have watery eyes, I suppose you could do that. But thankfully, I've never had that problem. So I just do that. This look in, the, in and of itself usually takes me 25, 30 minutes, but I'm talking, so it's taking me forever. And now we have to highlight the inner eye. I like it to be like a silvery, you know, like something that's gonna like pop, sometimes gold. And I'm taking an actual face highlighter, but you could do an actual eyeshadow. Wait a minute, do I have an eyeshadow that I wanna use? Let me see. I'm gonna take this CoverGirl True Blend Super Sun Hyper Glow <laughs> in the color Pearl Crush. This one is like a silvery kind of pearl situation. This is gonna open up the eye. Honey, I don't leave, well, I leave home without makeup. But when I do my makeup, always highlight the inner eye, always. And this is the product, sorry, here it is, right here. And I like to overdo, okay? That's just how I like to do my inner eye. You can really do it very subtly, like a little teensy little thing, but I like to make sure you see this, okay? And then I'm cleaning off my brush, cleaning off my brush, and then blending the outside of it. Not the actual product, just the outside so that there are no, what? harsh lines. I could use the same thing on my face to highlight. I could use this done that, but since I put this here in the inside, why not wear something different on the out, um, like as a face highlight, right? Like why do the same thing? But before that, let's go over the contour again. Now I've left my contour like this in the past. I could really and truly leave it like this. Maybe I should. I should just leave it like this, huh? One thing I do want to do is this. Take the same brush that I used to do my, no my nose contour with this brush. I'm going to use the CoverGirl True Blend just you just need a dark powder any dark powder is fine this is the true blend powder foundation the color deep cool four taking a little bit of it tap off and i'm gonna go right here just right here you know not gonna take it down this really adds some drama you know and you don't have to do this but when i do it it's kind of cute i like the contour to connect to the eyebrow. This is all based on my face shape though. So this might not work on you per se. I feel like this side is not as dark as I would like it to be. So I'm just gonna go over it again. When I use the cream, I didn't put enough, but I don't always go over the contour. It just depends on whether or not it's as dark as I want it to be. And this is just left over now onto this side, okay? Now we're gonna do blush. I really like the Mente Cosmetics blushes and I'm gonna use Clay Too Much first and then Peach for the start. Oh wait, how can I forget highlight? Hold on. Okay, so this is the same CoverGirl True Blend Super Stunner. This is the same CoverGirl Super Stunner True Blend. The name is so like a tongue twister. Super Stunner True Blend, whatever, that thing. And this is the color Gilded, Gil, Gil, Gilded Glory, okay? Right up here. This is more gold than it is silver, so it'll contrast the inner eye very nicely. I'm gonna start off with Clay Too Much. This is a nice burnt orange situation. Starting here, and I like, you know, I like to see my blush. So like, come on, you know? Tap up a little excess situation and really focus this in. I can see, I can see, I can see greater, greater things, greater things. And then the same brush, I'm going to take Peach for the Stars, which is orange, orange, orange. And I'm focusing that right here on the apple of my cheeks so gorgeous what 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 it's very glowy shimmery beautiful well, under eye mascara this is the it cosmetics one i was telling you about when i do my bottom mascara you gotta squint so that you're not risking your new lashes touching your face you could always go over this with another coat but usually when i get to my lip i want to be done i'm not going to do another coat of mascara i am a fan of lip stains simply because they're matte and they last forever so i'm going to put on this mented cosmetics lip stain in the color hot date first it's going to act like a lip pencil. This is totally like a caramel brown. Now, if you know me, you know that I'm a huge fan of a an ombre lip. I like my lip on the inside to be highlighted. That to me is more flattering than a muted lip situation. So I'm gonna highlight the inner part of my lip with ColourPop Sueño de Coco. I love to do that, de coco. <laughs> When you're de coco. I could keep it matte like this, or I put a gloss on top to give it a little bit of a boop. I'm gonna keep it matte 
because I don't want to have to deal with any mess when I eat. Okay, so this is my soft lamb every day. Just want to look cute. Didn't do too much. No eyeshadow situation type look. Maybe you followed along. Maybe you're planning on watching the video and then doing your makeup along with me. I want you to comment and let me know what you think about this look. Make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching.